What's up everybody, do right back at it again with another video on Dead Matter. So for those of you that are unaware, June was supposed to be the month where people were going to be able to get into the closed alpha, but they decided to push it back due to some unforeseen issues with said alpha. At the moment, they're trying to take things out of the alpha that are currently hindering the game so that we can play the parts that are currently playable. But as they are currently doing that, they decided to release a couple of updates that we are going to be getting into. So that is what we are going to be doing today with this video. Let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing that we're going to be talking about is quest and NPC dialogue system yeah so we briefly talked about this in the developer q a that i did not too long ago if you want to check that out then i'll put it at the top right on the eye icon it was an interesting conversation hope you enjoy but anyways while they won't have wandering npcs on day one dead matter will feature safe zones that contain npcs that you can interact with they built a flexible questing system that's built on a set of simplistic rules and the best part about it is that they believe this is an excellent opportunity to take some feedback from the community on quests as well as npc dialogue trees and then they have a thread here that apparently goes more in depth so let's take a quick look at that it says here quests from the technical perspective are a collection of objects with the quest itself defining how the objects are utilized and what order they are completed in here are the general rules of thumb that you could follow quests dictate the order of the objects needed to be completed in for example you can have a quest where objects have to be completed in a linear manner and then it shows objects one through three you can also have multiple objects per stage in a quest and then it shows object one two three and then object four and five you can also have branching objectives and then it shows objective one or three and objective two has objective a and c objective three has b and d sounds like a whole lot of mumbo jumbo to me but i believe this is um i forget what they call it but i'm gonna call it encoding they go on to talk about objectives here these are essentially goals for the player to chase after when suggesting a quest we ask that you stick to the current objectives that are currently available however we don't want to completely limit the creative freedom here if there's something that you feel is simple then please go ahead and suggest what you've got we're really enthusiastic about the potential for the community involvement here so i'm guessing that this is basically opening up to the community here because i'm sure that they have like a bunch of quests in mind but i'm sure a lot of people are going to be like oh well this quest feels a bit too tedious or not fun enough i'm sure that's what they're doing here basically getting a whole lot of things from the community and there's a bunch of like community responses here <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> i just hope that if they actually do something like this that it's not just a reference but there's actually a point to doing it like to give an example like get a pizza off of the roof because some dumbass threw it up there but not just to do that but like say the pizza hit like an antenna or something and you have to clean it off in order for you to get like communications like have it make sense and why you would need to go up there to clean it in the first place because you know this is supposed to be like an apocalypse like what's the point of me cleaning up a pizza on a, on a house that's probably not even being used you know like give me a reason as to why i would need to do that if that makes any sense but it's pretty cool i gotta say i like how they're opening this up so that's interesting i wonder if they're gonna have voice actors i'm definitely on the market if you need one but anyways moving on to the survivor mesh they say here that a guy named peyton has been overhauling the player mesh in preparation for the closed alpha we will be able to tweak many elements of our appearances such as your facial hair and a variety of features here are some of the profiles that peyton has provided for this update including different variants of player meshes there is also an overhauled version of the female mesh in the works so it obviously shows off the very many ways that you can add a lot of hair to one's face and head you know it'd be kind of cool if you could like make mohawks and or dreads or just paint your hair color you know like if somebody wants to make like a clan or something and they want to you know look different from other people maybe they'll like dye their hair freaking green or something be like hey we're the green heads we're here to kick some ass and take some things but it's cool to have a whole lot of uh variety when it comes to this sort of stuff but moving on the next thing that we're going to be talking about is the trading system we talked a lot about this on the previous video, so again, if you want to take a look at it, it's at the eye icon at the top right. In addition to the NPC dialogue and questing system, we have implemented a new trading system that allows players to trade with each other while also allowing players to trade with NPCs. We've still got a few more kinks to work out with the system, but we're quite pleased with it thus far. And then it shows off the picture right here. I believe when I did the interview, they actually mentioned what kind of currency it was going to be, but I wondered like what the value of it is, or if there's anything that's actually backing it, or if it's actually going to make any 
any sense. But yeah. Up next, we got Map Expansion. They say that their closed alpha will actually be launching with a much larger region than they were initially anticipating. The playable area will be roughly 7.5 kilometers by 7.5 kilometers. A new region has yet to be revealed in a development vlogger blog until now. And then they show off a couple of pictures here. The first one is of a barn and a factory next to it, but there's also a link that's attached to all of these. So we're able to get a bigger and closer look at this area. So first I thought that I would start with this image here. Uh, this image is the viewing of everything that's here. What we got here is a couple of uh, silos here on the left. We got a residential house down at the bottom here with a garage beside it. And then we got a warehouse off to the right and two barn houses in the back with a silo. We got another picture that shows the front of the barn. Looks pretty neat, up close and personal. And then we got a pic that shows the inside of the barn that's behind this barn. I believe we have two different pics of the same barn, but they're both looking different directions. So that's pretty cool. And the next up there, we're gonna be talking about base building, but I just wanna point out that this would actually be a cool spot to set up shop for a base. I really have to wonder how big the radius for a base you can actually do here. The next pick that's on the front of this update is showing an underground. I believe this is an area that you can actually go to do something, but I don't know if they've ever specified that, but I believe we have more picks of this area. There's another pick right here showing the inside of it, and I believe that is the only other one, but uh, yeah. They have some more pictures here of what looks like a forest, and the camera's kind of like following a trail that goes from a tower to another place in the forest to a log cabin. We're going to talk about this cabin a little later, so don't forget about it. They then go on to say here, there's also been some progress made on the safe areas that will be in the game, as seen here. And then it shows off two different pictures. It shows like an underground area along with like a subway looking area. And I believe we have more pictures of that underground area. Yeah, we've got um, what looks like the inside of a barracks, but I believe it's underground. With a couple of crates here and two porta potties. Then we have what looks like giant fans. It looks like a place that you could travel through. And then there's another picture showing maybe the other end of where it comes out. And uh, yeah, the one thing that I like about these safe zones is that they actually make sense. Because if I had to criticize a lot of the safe zones that I've seen, it's that they don't make any sense. Like, what's to hold back a zombie horde from invading that safe zone? Like, take Dead Side, for instance. Like, their safe zone is held off by a bunch of red flags. Like, how the hell does that make any sense? Like, they must have propellant or something. I don't know. So to see safe zones underground or to see safe zones behind some sort of, like, barricades that keep them out, that's pretty cool. And it makes sense. So yeah, that was the update that happened on 06-13-20. So earlier this month. Now we're going to get into the next update that happened on the 19th of this month. So let's go ahead and get into that. So the first thing that they talk about is development. They say that a guy named Kyle has been working on getting the system for claiming and barricading structures ready for the closed alpha. There's still a few minor issues as well as some missing content that they'll be taking care of in the very near future, but the system mostly works at the moment. You will be able to claim structures when grouped up with players. So let me get this straight. You can't claim them if you're alone. I mean, I guess that's a good way to try to get people to work together. Like in order for you to like set up shop at a base or something, you have to have some sort of team. So there's an idea. And then they have a video here that actually shows the claiming. The video starts off with him unpausing the game and then showing the stuff that he's wearing. It looks like he's got a duffel bag, regular t-shirt, a beanie, glasses, pants, and shoes. And then you see a bunch of planks in his inventory along with a hammer, screwdriver, what is that, duct tape? The blue thing? Or those cans? I can't tell. Nails and I'm not sure what that is. Maybe a baggie or something? So he turns over to look at that one cabin that we saw in the previous update. He walks up to it and he starts barricading the windows with some sort of newspaper. Is that just to keep people from seeing you? Interesting. And then he walks over to the door and then he decides to put on a lock for the door so you can lock your doors and nobody can come in. And then he starts to barricade the rest of the windows that are in the house. He walks back outside and then he goes over to the side of the house and then he finds a circuit breaker that's on the side and he claims the area for himself. Two things I would like to know. One, is this guy by himself when he claimed this or is he in a team? And two, how big is the building radius? Because I don't think they actually showed off in this video. But anyways, I think you call it a scroll wheel pops up and it allows him to build certain things for his uh, area here. He goes back around and he starts to barricade the windows even further, putting wood on them. I wonder how much you can actually barricade that sort of stuff. And then he puts out some sort of scaffolding or like the outline of a scaffolding all the way around the house, it seems. And then he begins to start putting things on it. So he puts on wood that we saw in his inventory previously, but it looks like the thing glitched out there. So yeah, it's it's obviously not completely ready just yet. And now he puts even more woods on the side. He puts a wood on top. And on the other side, he puts like some sort of metal uh, plate. There seems to be different types of uh, wall that you can do. Or maybe you can just reinforce it. I can't really say for sure. But if you could like put wood all there and then put metal on the outside, that'd be kind of cool. And then he puts down some 
sort of like farming thing and some sort of like barrel that collects water. It seems like you're able to upgrade the wall. It looks like you can also dismantle the wall that you have. It begins to start planting stuff and you also have to give it water, I'm assuming. I really have to wonder if um, that water is gonna be, like you have to wait until it actually rains for it to get filled up or if it just like comes up automatically. So yeah, that's really cool. You could have like your little base of operations and stuff. Can't wait to try that out. But uh, yeah, let's move on. Gunschlinger is actually the guy who I did a bit of a Q&A with in the previous video if you wanna go check that out. He has apparently been working on fixing a few issues with the tree cutting system as well as getting our foraging system implemented. We're still missing a few meshes and a bit of polish, but it should be ready to go once closed alpha comes around. Let's take a dive into this little video here. So it starts him off in a house and he walks outside, turns left, looks at his inventory to check if he needs something, and then he walks over to the nearest bush. A prompt came up saying hold F to forage bush. Looks like he picked up a forage stick, forage carrot seed, carrot seed, and forage leaves. Not sure what any of this stuff does aside from the seed, you know, being planted. It's an interesting looking stick. And then he goes to another bush and does the same thing, picks up forage leaves. Then he goes to another bush and he picks up forged tomato seeds. This is an interesting little bush they got there. Carrot seeds and tomato seeds. And he walks around to the nearest tree, pine tree. And then he forages bark. He gets a lot of bark. I just want to really quick look at what he's wearing. Let's see, we got an army bag, a beanie, gloves, an LS shirt, a police vest, military pants, a bat, and an AKM. Pretty neat. Let's move on from there. It says here, our animators have been working on tying up any missing effects and crucial animation sets that are required before we launch into closed alpha. Here's a sneak peek at one of the new civilian rifles that the shiny Hoxerus, Haxerus has recently implemented into the game. The video is called 1837 and he keeps shooting the weapon. I believe this is a Winchester. It's a very nice looking weapon though, I gotta say. Moving on, our level design team has been working on fleshing out the rural sections of the map as well as adding cave and mountain trails. And then it shows a picture of a road going down towards a rural area. It continues on to say, we cannot confirm or deny the presence of cool things within caves, but you should probably check it out once the closed alpha has started. I'll be sure to check those then. And it shows a picture of like a little cave right there. And the last photo here is very dark, but you can see some sort of glow sticks. There are also glow sticks strewn about to help you navigate. Keep in mind that image compression can make these images appear a lot darker than they appear in game. Interesting. So this is actually darker than it is in game. Okay, cool. Better to have more light to light up the way. And that does it for this update. This was update 061920. So now we're going to be pushing on to the next update that just came out recently. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. It starts out with saying that a guy named Kyle is working on vehicle optimizations, getting clocks working based on the in-game time, working gas pumps, working with the necessary menus so players can fill containers from the pumps, a variety of vehicle colors, and getting the electricity system up and running again. So yeah, the first little gift that they have here actually shows the clock and like the daytime going throughout the day. That's pretty neat. The next gift that they have here is a guy that runs out from a building that looks like it's actually has some sort of alarm on, and then he runs over to a circuit breaker, flips it off, goes back in to flip on the light, and obviously it doesn't work because he turned off the power. Then he comes back to turn on the circuit breaker, then he runs back into the building, flips on the fire alarm, and the fire alarm starts going. I think that this would be really good for like distracting zombies. I mean, obviously they say that sound is going to be your biggest enemy, but you could also use it to your advantage. So I could definitely use this to search other buildings while this keeps the zombies occupied. So that's pretty neat. Moving on. Note that turning off the power for most buildings, especially player claimed buildings, will not be this simple. This video is only showcasing the functionality. Oh, okay. Interesting. The next picture that's here, it shows a bunch of cars. I'm assuming that this is the different variety of vehicles that you can find in the game. That or it's just a parking lot. Can't say for sure. But either way, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Gunschlinger has been working with Riz and Kyle on the campfire crafting and maintenance. So in this video, it shows a log and he's using a saw to cut up this log and turn it into planks. And obviously use the planks to make things like uh, walls and stuff like that. And then it shows a gif of him combining leaves with sticks and it turns into a campfire in the inventory. In the next gif, he actually sets it down into the real world here. And then it looks like you're able to add more stuff to it. He adds firewood to keep it going. It looks like you're able to actually check the strength of the fire in this next gif here. Fire will last about 64 minutes, it looks like. And then the next gif just shows a fire just going and it just repeats with that. So they actually have a time lapse here in the next gif of the fire just going, going and going until it actually goes out. And it seems like it actually lasts a long time. So you might be good for a little while. Kind of have to wonder how big that smoke cloud is going to be though. Cause I imagine a lot of people are going to see that in the dark. And then there's also going to be people that are going to be seeing the fire from afar. So it's going to be interesting to try and hide that. But anyways, Nomad has been working on getting a go-kart track added to the world. And given the go-karts and given the carts an art pass, we'll show them 
in action in another post. This was something that we had shown very early in development and are excited to have back in the world. We hope players will find a bit of levity with these before the infected maul them to death. And then it shows the little race course here. I wonder how big it is. It looks fairly small if this is the size it shows uh, the interior looks pretty neat pretty standard here and then it shows off the little go-kart uh yeah i don't know how effective these go-karts are going to be i mean it's not like you could like carry too much so yeah i think this is just like for shits and giggles really it's cool that this is here all right let's move on tack has finished updating the details of the eater pistol how do you say that eater eater which i'm sure plenty of you will recognize and is now moving on to some other weapons this pistol will be textured soon this looks more like a glock to me than whatever the hell they said it is which I mean, for copyright reasons, they probably changed the name, but it, the gun basically looks the same. So yeah, we've got like a, it looks like you're able to like completely customize the weapon because you have like different attachments right here on this picture. And then you have a picture that's a little further down that actually makes it look way more advanced. Yeah. So this is like the gun that has like the whole attachments on the top here. And then this is the one without the attachments. So I have to wonder, um, does this improve the weapon a lot? Like, are there any stats that we can look at in the game to see what improves exactly? Cause that would be pretty neat. Be like escape from target off like you add stuff to the gun and the gun becomes significantly better but anyways moving on speaking of guns Hax has gotten the backer weapon r700 animated into the game as well uh r700 i believe this is the remington 700 correct it's a bolt action sniper rifle it's a pretty neat looking gun although the stock looks a little different are there wooden remingtons because that kind of looks like a wooden stock i've only ever seen the plastic i think it's plastic right I, I don't know i've never held one myself so i can't say for sure but yeah that looks like a wooden stock which makes me wonder if you're able to to completely customize this weapon here like give it a better stock i mean the previous weapon that we just looked at looks a lot different when you switch out all of the attachments and stuff but anyways dr yitz or marcus has gotten two more safe zones added to the map that the players will be able to encounter npcs and start tasks from the first is duke cartilage duke cartilage's radio station safe house are we going to be able to listen to music that'd be kind of cool like how scum has it and then it shows the uh, radio tower here uh, i'm assuming this is his uh looks more like a warehouse than uh yeah Looks like a base of operations, really. Pretty cool. I wonder if they have any voice actors. They talk about another building here. It says, and the second is the Dominion Storage Facility, where survivors from all over Alberta were able to come together and take shelter during the outbreak. Cool. I heard that there was going to be like different factions that you can actually join. So I wonder if these are those factions. I wonder if they're going to have like cool looking uniforms too. That'd be kind of cool. But uh, yeah, let's move on here. Traders and task givers can be found behind tables like these. Okay, cool. And the table is like like right there so is he always there then all right all right cool even at nighttime many have taken the relative safety of the indoor storage rooms as apartments during the outbreaks that's actually a pretty neat idea they're using um storage units as little places to sleep and stuff that's a neat idea but i have to wonder what their um like barricades and stuff are gonna be because the only thing that i saw was like the chain link fence and i'm like eh, i don't know if that's gonna stop zombies and that's pretty much that so yeah there was quite a bit of stuff here i gotta say i honestly can't wait to play this game and yeah this is where i'm gonna cut it if you enjoyed the fact that i cover games like dead matter why don't you go ahead and like the video share the video and comment down below of what you think of these updates every someone that wants to support the channel check out my patreon just send two bucks a month it really helps and with that all being said i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye